Hi, I'm Dylan. And I'm Ryan. And welcome to the biggest book haul we have ever it is, done. That's true. <laughs> yeah, we've done a few book haul videos in the past, but this one is a little bit different because before we went shopping somewhere together. That's right. Uh, one time you a went few to different places. places. Yeah. This time we've been apart for a while. Mm -hmm. And so we have separately been acquiring lots of new things. And since we are back together, we're just going to make one big book haul video of all the different things that yeah. we got. It's going to be a lot of books. Uh, we both have some music to show you. And then I'll show you a few movies at the end. So here is what we got. I will yeah, go so first. we're going to go in and we're going to do it that way, right? We're going to do our books mm -hmm. and then some music and then the movies. Yeah. And then, yeah, you go first. You got more stuff, so... I got a lot this time. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't good this year. So my first book is a book called Owls and Other Fantasies, Poems and Essays by Mary Oliver. Mary Oliver is an American poet. She writes a lot of nature poetry. Uh, I've really enjoyed her poetry in the past. And also a collection of essays called Upstream, where she writes about nature and some American literature. Uh, also, her poetry collection, Dog Songs, uh, all poems about dogs with cute little drawings in it. Uh, so I saw this one at Barnes & Noble with cute little owls on the front. So I thought I'd give this one a try. I haven't read it yet, but I'm excited to read Owls and Other Fantasies. That's cool. I'm somewhat interested in that. I did read American Primitive. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You loaned me. Actually, you ended up giving me that copy because yeah. I said I liked the... I liked the font and the t like typesetting uh, in yeah. it in particular, so I wanted to like have that as a reference for reference that. for other writing. Yeah, um, yeah, I would recommend uh, Upstream if you want some essays and dog songs poetry. I liked both of those better than American Primitive. Okay, yeah, I mean um, American Primitive, I like liked, but it wasn't like I didn't like it a whole lot. That yeah. kind of a thing. So I'd be interested to read some more mm -hmm. um, of her. So we'll get to. Mine, um, I think all of almost all of my books, the first few, are related to stuff we've done on this channel um, or will do on this Ooh, channel. Spoilers! And that's the first one. Well, teaser. Uh, you know. Teasers. <laughs> uh, the first one here is uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, uh -huh. um, which uh, what is it? Killers of the Flower Moon, the Osage mur murders, and the birth of the FBI, um, which uh, at the time of this filming fairly recently had um a movie adaptation come out um about that martin scorsese right that's um, what i was gonna ask you i think it's a martin think scorsese so. starring um, leonardo dicaprio maybe robert de niro is in it um maybe not no i'm not I sure maybe Scors scorsese, i don't i don't remember i know it. um dicaprio's in it so mm -hmm. um yeah so we're potentially doing this some so what will be way in the future for you um yeah as you can tell we haven't watched the movie yet <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh at some point um you'll forget about this if you're watching this <laughs> and you subscribe to our channel you'll forget about this at some point but but um, subscribe and stay tuned because an episode's coming of this yeah. eventually yeah cool uh my next one is called existentialism is a humanism by jean-paul sartre not sure if that's how you say his name but um yeah, Sartre is a French writer and existentialist. I have only read a couple of his plays, which I enjoyed. I've never read any of his nonfiction. I know you have a copy of Being and Nothing. I do, right? and I barely started it once and, it and seems... didn't get through it. But I would like to because there's a lot about existentialism that mm. is interesting to me. Yeah, I have been too scared to even pick up a copy of that one, <laughs> yeah. but... Uh, I liked his plays, and then I also read um, some Albert Camus, who is a French existentialist. And then this collection of essays includes one where Sartre reviews The Stranger by Albert Camus and apparently argues that it's a comedy, like that it's an existential comedy. So I would like to start reading some Sartre nonfiction by reading his review of a book that I have read, see if that's a good intro into his nonfiction. Existentialism is a humanism. Cool. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, my next one is mm-hmm. um, another uh, book by Haruki Murakami, who we've done um, the his story and subsequent movie adaptation of Drive My Car Underrated. on this channel uh, for Adaptation Station. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one is Blind Willow Sleeping Woman, mm-hmm. um, which is um, a uh, book of stories. Short stories. Short stories, mm-hmm. which um, I really liked that whole collection that Drive My Car is from, mm-hmm. Men Without mm-hmm. Women. Um, I did also read First Person Singular. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't like that as much as Men Without Women. I think you liked it I more. really liked that one. That's um, one of my favorites of his that I've read so far. So when I was looking through the few options they had, um, a lot of time that I was at Barnes & Noble, and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get another book. I was like, mm-hmm. let me read another uh, book of short mm-hmm. stories. He has a huge collection to choose from. Yeah. Right? So many books by Murakami. Yeah, uh-huh. Cool. Uh, my next one is a short little uh, novella, you could call it, called Fumes by William Dozier, or Dozier. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Um, this one is a self-published novella that came out in 2023, And I found the author on YouTube, actually. He makes some videos doing book reviews and book lists. And I tuned into some of those. And then he started advertising that uh, he had his own little novella coming out. And I already read it because it's a short, quick one. And I liked it. It It's good. Interesting. He, I know from his videos, he's a big fan of Cormac McCarthy. And I kind of get that vibe from it. So, yeah, you might enjoy this yeah. one also. Um, I could just hand it off to you okay, for now. Okay, yeah. You, it's a um, quick one. Does uh, he uh, write in that same style that I forget the name of it that uh, is similar to Hemingway mm. where there's the kind of almost run-on sentences of, you know, this and that and that. And uh, then he, you know, he got up and then he went and he went to the mm. door and he got went to the car. Yeah, and yeah. He, you know, that kind There of might thing. be some of that. I don't remember specifically that style sticking Mm -hmm. out to me but it's definitely Hemingway McCarthy-esque with how it it doesn't like explain to you what's happening Mm -hmm. there's not like a narrator that's talking I do like that it's just what's happening it's just what is happening yeah Yeah. I just things happen then it ends and it's like okay yeah (laughs) I do like that yeah cool all right, my next one is one that I can te- or that's related to something that I can tease a little bit. Um, it is um, the novel Head F- A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. And um, this one's a little closer tease um, to uh, Adaptation Station Season 3 uh, at the time of Episode filming. Episode coming about out. About to drop. Probably pretty soon, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That uh, we do uh, Paul Tremblay's um, uh, Cabin at the End of the Woods. Mm-hmm. And the um, M. Night Shyamalan adaptation, Knock at the uh, Cabin. At the cabin. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, somewhat spoiler, obviously <laughs> I liked that book. Enough to, enough to go, oh, let me read another of Paul Tremblay. I think there was a quote, oh, there's a Stephen King quote on this. Mm. But there was um, either some quote I had seen, I think it was probably on the book, um, mm-hmm. Uh, that Stephen King liked it, right? Yeah, it was something that Stephen King said that like Paul Tremblay is one of the best horror writers right now. You know, I remember seeing a blurb from something Stephen like King that. So I was copy. like, let me try it. And there's a blurb on this one: a "Head full of ghosts scared the living hell out of me, <laughs> and I'm pretty hard to scare." Ah, yeah. So. It's always a good sign if there's a little blurb from Stephen King, like a positive blurb <laughs> yeah. like that. Uh, cool. Head full of ghosts. Uh, my next one is another collection of poetry. This one is called Playlist for the Apocalypse by Rita Dove. Uh, Rita Dove is another American poet that I read some of her work in college. And then I saw that this book came out uh, somewhat recently, I think 2021. Yeah, 2021. So a new collection. And this one I also already read. Uh, I haven't read a lot of the books on my to be read shelf from our previous book hauls, but I went through kind of a phase where I, I got some new ones and read them right away because yeah. they piqued my interest. Um, so yeah, I was going through a poetry phase and this one was interesting. Uh, like not one of my favorites, but interesting to read a new collection of poems from an American author. Uh, poet. <clears throat> the next one I got here mm. was... Um, 
Sylvia Plath, The Bell Jar, um, which I don't really know much about. I picked it up because I had been, if you'd watched any of the other um, book hauls, I think the first two in particular, I've liked to pick up these books that are referenced in some other mm. media, a TV show, a movie, or something like this. Yeah. This one is in... Uh, Ten things I hate about you. Ten things I hate okay. about you. She's this reading is, it, right? Yeah, she's know. reading it. Uh, yeah, in uh, mm. early on in her house. Um, so I was like, "Oh, let me grab that." Um, it's supposed to be a classic. I mean, I've yeah. heard, heard of it for sure. It's referenced a lot. I've never read it. Yeah. So um, that's a you know another adaptation station season one. We did uh, Ten Things I Hate About You, still which is one of my from, favorites. That's a great. It's a great movie, um, adapted from The Taming of the Shrew by, by Shakespeare. William Shakespeare. Not one of my favorite Shakespeare no, plays. Also, we agree on that one. Yeah. <laughs> but. Cool. Another movie tie-in. Uh, my next one is a really big book, and it's actually another collection of poetry, mostly. This is the Penguin Classics Selected Writings of Rubin Dario. And this is the reason why I look like a soccer player right now, too, actually. I'm wearing my Nicaragua jersey. This is the famous national poet of Nicaragua. Why am I repping them so hard, you might be wondering. Uh, well, if you don't know me already, I work as an English teacher at a high school for people from around the world. And my school put on this multicultural fair where they ask teachers to stand at a booth and represent a country. They said, please just sign up for a country. It doesn't matter if you're from there, if you've been there. And Nicaragua was one that was left on the list. And it's right to the north of Costa Rica where I have been. So I said, okay, I'll choose that one and try to learn some things about this country. <laughs> um, so I got a jersey to wear for that event. And then I found out they have a national poet that obviously wrote a lot. Prolific. Prolific, yeah, and he's supposedly a big deal in world literature um, for his style, and they have a statue of him in Nicaragua and everything. So I picked up this book to put on display at that fair, and I've started reading it a little bit, but it's a lot of poetry, so it'll yeah. take me a while. It, this one's cool, too, because it has the original Spanish on one page and then an English oh, translation cool. on the other page. Another reason it's so big. Yeah. It like doubles them up. But, yeah, more poetry. Yeah, so I'm on less of a poetry kick. I have one. Uh, this is my mm -hmm. one book of poetry I got. Um, Robert Hass, Time and Materials. Mm -hmm. um, there's only maybe two other ones left now of his that, that I haven't read. Really? I um, am actually reading this one right now. Oh, really? And it's the last one I haven't read. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm jumping all over the place. You mm -hmm. know, haven't gone in order uh, by any means. Um, this was one that was left on my list, and it was on my bingo board for 2023 to mm -hmm. read a Robert Hass, mm -hmm. um, and I hadn't yet, so... Uh, I, so this is one I have already read now. Ah, um, uh -huh. uh, by the time we film this, I've read this. Yeah, so you beat me to it. I'm like almost done with it right now. Yeah, I read this over again. Thanksgiving. Ah, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. So. Uh, my next one is a little book called El Principito. Um, this is actually the most translated book in the world. Wow. Uh, I don't remember if I showed you that article. There was an article put out by Book Riot, I think is the publication, where it says the most translated book from every country in the world. And this is France's most translated book, like translated into the most different languages, mm. but also the most translated book in the world. Um, it's called The Little Prince in English. Uh, not sure of the French French title, <laughs> uh, yeah. and I don't know how to say the author's name, Antoine de Saint Exupéry. Uh, but it's a little book that you could call a kids' book, but it's also like interesting enough for adults. It's uh, got more words than like a kids' picture book, but it also has drawings, uh, and it's about a little, well, a kid and then a a prince who like comes from another planet to earth and he's like learning things and meeting a lot of different people and uh i was gifted this one i got this as a present um from one of my students because i shared that article about 
translated books and one of my students said oh this is one of my favorite books i love the little prince and i said oh i've never read it uh so they got me a spanish language copy so i could read the book and also practice my spanish this is a good spanish reading level for mm. me because it's uh short and simple but not so simple and of a kid's book that it would be boring mm -hmm. and the pictures are helpful so yeah you talked about that i don't know i don't wouldn't remember that it was an article but mm -hmm. you've talked about most translated um books books from each country because mm -hmm. one of them is norwegian wood right oh yeah by murakami yeah that's um, japan's most translated yeah and you read that i one, did right? read that one i did like i liked that mm -hmm. one too a lot i, I, I think that was in a, that my like top books um from some year that we did i don't know if it mm -hmm. was 22 i think it was 22 that sounds right yeah i would like to read that one maybe next year because i had on my bingo card to read a translated book and i i was thinking i would read norwegian wood mm -hmm. but then i got this as a gift so i read this one and that checked off that box yeah so um maybe that'll be the next one i mean it, it would be interesting it would take forever but to read the most uh, translated book from every country and say you yeah. traveled the world. Just a fun <laughs> yeah. little thing to do every once in a while. Yeah, and then a uh, nice segue about uh, reading something mm. in another language. Um, that was another spot on my bingo, mm -hmm. reading bingo board was to read something in Spanish because I've been um, doing Spanish on Duolingo for a long time, really. You have like over a thousand day streak, right? Well, yeah, it's, I'm almost at 3,000. Oh my gosh. I'm like 12 days away from 3,000 right. um, streak. Um, so like eight years. Mm -hmm. um, but five minutes a day doesn't do much for you. That's, I'm not going crazy with it. You know, I took Spanish in, in high school. Um, reading a book is a lot better Reading practice. a book. So I, I d was like, hmm, it's got to be some kind of kid's book. And I chose the Goosebumps adaptation, <laughs> Escalofrios. Uh -huh. uh, and is this the first? This is the first Goosebumps one. This book? is number one. Mm -hmm. um, Bienvenidos a la Casa de, de la Muerte. Welcome to Dead House. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this was fun. I really enjoyed reading it. Mm -hmm. I already read it. Um, harder than I thought. But it didn't make me discouraged. I still enjoyed mm. reading it, but I had to sit there the whole time with the computer open um, to and typing in stuff to translate mm -hmm. um, all the time because there's there's just you know almost like colloquialisms and phrases that yeah. that you don't get a lot. And then um, I really think that the biggest thing this did was strengthen my um, identification of verb tenses because mm, um, you get. It in context. You get right? it in context, yeah. There's mm -hmm. a lot of, the, of that, and it's not just like, you know, something like Duolingo, you're primed to like, oh, I'm learning about past tense right now. So everything that comes up, you tense. know it's going to be past tense, so it's a little yeah. easier. And now then with this, it's like, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, you got to work with it a little bit more. So, yeah. But I really enjoyed it. Awesome. Um, this copy, used copy, has a, like some, what I think are like, Temporary tattoos. They're not stickers. Oh, yeah. They're like some Barbie Barbie tattoos <laughs> that, <laughs> that are so. on there a little bit. So it's very authentic <laughs> yeah. of the time. <laughs> yeah, this is a former library copy. I was going to ask, did you find San it? San Diego in a, Public Library. Did you find it in a store or online? I didn't. I found it online. Uh -huh. I bought it used online. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, all right. My next one is a semi-new release that I also already read called The Fraud by Zadie Smith. Um, if you follow my YouTube channel also, I have one. I did a video ranking all of Zadie Smith's novels before this one came out, and then I did a book review of this one. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Zadie Smith, especially her first novel. So when I saw she was coming out with a new one, I had to pick that one up and read it to see where it falls on my rankings. And it's uh, toward the bottom. I didn't, oh, really? didn't like it so much. Yeah, it was like kind of easy to read. I read it pretty quickly over Thanksgiving. Yeah, just the way that it's written was not that exciting. Uh, but yeah, not my favorite Sadie Smith. So I'm going to get to my... We'll go one by one. We'll still alternate, but my next two are related. Um, oh, okay. And um, my girlfriend got them for me. We had our Christmas early. We mm -hmm. did ours together um, mm -hmm. early. And so um, she got me the mm. um, screenplay mm. 
of The Witch, one of my favorite A24 movies, and this is official like A24, um, and it's got... It's a hardcover, too. It's a hardcover. It comes mm-hmm. with a bookmark, Whoa. you know, yeah, that just says cool. The Witch on it, and um, it's got um, pictures, so it's, it is the screenplay, you know, mm-hmm. then it's got Full some um, pictures in it, you know, f- uh-huh. from the movie, and then it's got like a... Um, an interview. interview or something at the back of it, mm-hmm. um, commentary kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, credits at the end, very stylized, yeah. um, for what it is. And so I was excited about that. Um, I'll have to maybe read through it once. I'm not, I don't know if I'm excited about, I mean, I've seen the movie. I don't know if I'm excited about reading this, like it's a book, but it's very, very cool to have. It's a great collector. Yeah. Item. And, and, you know, like with principal cast on the back of it. Um, and everything it's uh it could very, be interesting cool. to read especially if i don't know maybe we want to make a movie someday it'd be good to read well, a that's true. screenplay <laughs> yeah see how to write one uh-huh. uh cool my next one was also a 2023 book release that i picked up and read and ended up loving it this one is called where there was fire by john manuel arias this one is historical fiction like the fraud but this one mostly takes place in costa rica where there was a fire at a banana plantation in 1968 and it's about one family that the father worked at that banana plantation and how they were affected by it on that one night uh but then it skips forward and back in time to look at different generations of the family and then it keeps flashing back to reveal a little bit more about that one night Um, so the way that it's structured is super interesting i like the way that it's written it's kind of in the uh latin american uh magical realism style but very much grounded in realism which i like it feels very realistic uh even though there's maybe like some some ghosts appear every once in a while. Uh, but I don't really like high fantasy stuff, so I really like the way that it's subtly put into there. So this one was um, the first book by this new author and poet that I just picked up because it sounded interesting, and I ended up loving it. One of my new favorites. Uh, I liked it a lot more than the Zadie Smith one that mm-hmm. I thought I would like more. Yeah. Yeah, so this one was great. All right, and this is my last um, book, and this one is another one of those A24 screenplays, but this uh, one's Under the Skin. Maybe hard to see. i got to get some glare yeah, on this one for there to be able to see it. Yeah, um, it's because it's black Because it's a... It, this one, the other one was like a matte finish. This is a black glossy mm, finish, mm-hmm. which, if you've seen Under the Skin, kind of fits in with you know yeah very fitting and then you goes. see scarlett johansson there just barely yeah and it's like opaque yeah and so same kind of thing really cool um it's cool to see like on the back principal cast just scarlett johansson <laughs> as, as the, female. the female because there's very little dialogue in yeah, this uh-huh. and thus it's shorter uh, yeah you sure. know much shorter than the other one than the witch so super interesting very of course cool. check out our Again, episode on that bookmark mm-hmm. too and that was the book to movie adaptation that gave us the idea for adaptation. That's station. true. That's the that's the whole reason this whole channel appeared. Yeah, <laughs> you it's know, because of that. So that's important. Yeah. Okay, I have just a couple more books I'll show. Um, this one was also a new release from 2023. This one I did not get around to reading yet. It's called Rouge by Mona Awad, and it's some kind of satire about the beauty product industry um, and something, I don't know, something strange and cult-like is going on in the beauty industry. Uh, Yeah, I can't tell you much about it because I haven't read it yet, but it sounded really interesting, so I hope to get around to it soon. Uh, The next one is another collection of poetry, and I did read this one because I was on a poetry kick, and it's a short one. This was another new release. It's called Dharma Talk, poems by John Brem. And they're simple, easy to read little poems about uh, Zen Buddhism, but really just about everyday things that happen in his life and finding some meaning in them. I really enjoyed that one. 
I have one more collection of poetry called Me Dicen Huero. This one is in Spanish. Um, the title means they called me Huero. There's not really a translation for that. It's like a, like a white person, kind of like a gringo, but it's by a Mexican author that lived in like north, the north of Mexico and Southern California, I think, back and forth. And he's like very white looking for a Mexican. He had, describes him as having red hair and freckles, uh, like the famous Mexican boxer Canelo, if you've ever heard of him, Canelo Alvarez. Mm. Um, I haven't read it yet, but uh, I like to read poetry in Spanish because it's also good for my level. It's easy to read and uh, spend my time trying to understand the words. So I'll try to read that one soon. And I have one more book. This one was another gift to me recently called Do No Harm. Subtitle Stories of Life, Death, and Brain Surgery by Henry Marsh. Uh, it's a nonfiction one, and I believe it's a lot of, not short stories, but true stories of surgeries and uh, medical stories from the point of view of a brain surgeon. Uh, so that's an interesting nonfiction one I hope to yeah, get Yeah, that does seem interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those are all the books. Next, we were going to talk about some music we picked up. Yeah. I think we're going to have you start there, too, because yeah. I think you also have more than me. Yeah, I picked up music wise quite a few since we last got together. Um, a couple of them were gifts, including this first one, which is the album Love Over Gold by Dire Straits. Dire Straits is a British rock band. They, do, they have some famous songs like uh, The Walk of Life, Sultans of Swing, I Want My MTV, or whatever that Money for Nothing yeah. that's called. Mm-hmm. Um, none of those are on this album, but I was gifted this one and listened to it. I found it really interesting. I mean, they're kind of, uh, they're good musicians and they do kind of long pieces, kind of, Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's progressive rock, but just rock with a lot of stuff going on, good guitar solos and everything. My favorite song from this is a song called Industrial Disease, which is a kind of, silly story song of like people all have these problems just within modern society and they keep getting diagnosed with industrial disease (laughs) so that was an interesting gift um my first one i think i all got got all these in the same um trip um is a um, bob seger and the silver bullet band against the wind um and, you know, I'm a big Bob Seger fan, and so I was just like, ah, let me get one of these. And, you know, um, Her Strut actually is kind of one of my favorite ones that I like. Mm-hmm. I also like Fire Lake is here. Obviously, the uh, Against the Wind mm-hmm. um, is a good one. Um, so, it's that one. Bob Seger. Mm-hmm. My next one... Ooh. My next one's a big one because it's a 20th anniversary edition bonus remastered version of Un Dia Normal by Juanes. This one originally came out, yeah, 2002. This is the 2022 remastered one. Uh, If you don't know Juanes, he's one of my favorite guitarists, I would say, and uh, kind of does pop rock as a solo artist. Um from Colombia, and this album has a lot of his big hits like Adios Le Pido, Uh, what else is on here, La Paga was one of the first ones I heard, Fotografia with Nelly Furtado on it, Uh, so it's a really good album, and I feel like I could hear the remaster, Uh, or maybe it's just because I had never listened to this one on vinyl on a nice record player, but I had heard all these songs, but when I put the remastered one on my record player at home, I felt like it sounded better than I've ever heard it before. So I don't know if that's just the format, the remaster, or a combination Mm -hmm. of both, but um, this one's cool to have in the collection. And also just the the visual, because the original album cover just has one, one of his face is the cover, and they have it in the different colors here. So it's a good physical media collection item. Yeah. My next one is 
is a uh, the best of the James Gang, nice. um, and James Gang probably known as you know a band that Joe Walsh was in uh, before he Eagles? was no it was before before the Eagles, yeah before so. he was in and before his solo career mm-hmm. um, and all that um, people would recognize Funk Funk Forty Eight mm-hmm. um, from it maybe Walk Away probably um, but I like. Or I meant I didn't mean Funk Forty. I meant Funk Forty Nine. I really like Funk Forty Eight. That's the lesser known one for sure, though. Funk Forty Nine is mm-hmm. the big popular one. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to have a, a James Best of the James Gang on um, CD mm-hmm. back in the day. Funny to say, back in the day when I've just picked up a uh, something even older, something even <laughs> yeah. older. But um, there's more records are coming power. back. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. CDs are not. Yeah, not so much. Uh, my next one is called Ni Un Minuto Mas de Dolor by Travesia. This is a band, uh, three women from, I think, uh, looking for the country somewhere in uh, Uruguay. I knew it was South America. Um, this is not a group I was super familiar with when I got it, but I actually took a trip down to San Diego, California. On the way back... We stopped in a little place called Los Feliz, which is in Los Angeles. And we stopped for lunch just to eat some food. But there was a cute little record store across the street called Flamingo Records. And I found this one in there. It just sounded interesting the way it describes it. And it is interesting after I listened to it. It's very minimal in terms of the music. It's like acoustic guitar and then the three of them like sing and harmonize a lot. So it's very interesting kind of experimental sounding record. Cool. I also picked up here mm. um, what I would probably say one of my favorite, if not my favorite, uh, Billy Joel album, Street Life Serenade. Mm. Um, I really like that song that is, but I mean, got a... A, a good a lot of other ones on there i mean really not like big big hits like the entertainer might be the oh, biggest yeah. hit on this one i am the entertainer <laughs> yeah I know. but i like i really like los angelinos or los angelinos this is los it? angeles that's how yeah. he sings mm-hmm. it um the great suburban showdown and the last of the big time spenders mm. are, are like those ones as well so i know you had a big Billy Joel. Billy Joel was my top recently. artist of 2022, mm-hmm. um, and uh, so picked up some yeah, of that. Gotta have him in the collection. Yeah. Cool. Oh, uh, I'll say my next two at the same time, actually, because we went to a record store together, um, close to you. It was probably I... when I got all these ones I'm talking about. Was it? I don't remember which one you picked up. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember the name of the place, but yeah. I don't uh, either off the top of my head. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, if we remember it, maybe we'll link them down below to give them some advertising. Anyway, I picked up 10 by Pearl Jam, the debut album by Pearl Jam, which I really like. I mean, all the songs are great. Even Flow, Alive, Why Go, Jeremy was always one of my favorite songs by them. So I really wanted to have that in my collection. From that same store, I picked up some Vicente Fernandez, one of the most famous singers from Mexico. And I have some of his records in my collection already, but not this one. He has a bunch of records. Uh, He does, you know, a lot of classic vocal songs, kind of like Frank Sinatra. If I could make that comparison, Frank Sinatra has a lot of albums, does a bunch of songs in a similar style. Uh, so it's just nice to have another Vicente Fernandez in the collection. You've doubled some up. I'm not going to double any up just because I don't have as many. But another yeah. Billy Joel, um, which is uh, the Nylon Curtain, um, Allentown, Pressure, Goodnight Saigon, um, She's Right on Time. You know, I, uh, Allentown and Pressure, really some of my favorite um, Billy Joel as well cool i like that cover simple but yeah i like the style on that cool Ooh, my next one is the castlevania soundtrack castlevania 4 
that's what that Roman numeral is, right? Yeah. Um, this is the Super Castlevania 4, which we used to play a lot on Super Nintendo. And I remember really liking the music in it yeah. also. Like, in terms of how videos... In terms of video game soundtracks, this one was one that stood out to me. And I liked the game. Uh, so I saw this record at a local record store, and I thought, oh, I think that's the one that I really liked. And it just comes with some original artwork for this final record release. It makes it look like it's an anime yeah. <laughs> adaptation. I was going to ask if it was like the soundtrack to the Netflix show. Yeah, I know they made a Netflix show, and I wasn't sure about that either when I first saw this. I was like, is this from the game or from an adaptation? But... No, it's the original one from the game cool. and the artwork I found in there. Um, I could give credit to the artist if I find it later. But yeah, it's just original artwork just for the vinyl record release based on the Super Nintendo game. And I really like, I think it's Simon Belmont's theme. That was the recognizable mm. one to me, which I really like. Oh, I think I got my last one here. Another Billy Joel, yeah. The Bridge. Cool. Um, which, one of my favorites, A Matter of Trust, um, mm. on it, but I also like Modern Woman. Those are the two main ones on this one. Code of Silence is good, too. One with That's one with uh, Cindy Lauper. Oh, cool. Um, so. Yeah, another Billy Joel. Yeah. The cover to me looks like a Picasso blue period. It does. Painting. It does look like that. Right. I don't know uh, where it's from, but uh, maybe we'll, we'll have put to that, look that later up too. also. <laughs> and my next one also has some interesting artwork on it, and I just got it as a gift. This is my last one. Ooh. This is, the band is King Crimson. The album is called In the Court of the Crimson King from 1969. This is, uh, how to describe it, some kind of progressive rock, uh, you know, album. And I would think pretty heavy for that time period, 1969. I have listened to this album before. It's been a while and I just got it as a gift, so I haven't re-listened to it yet. I haven't really opened this vinyl record copy. The one song I remember is uh, 21st Century Schizoid Man. Uh, it's a familiar title yeah. to me. I don't know that I would, I don't recognize I it think, off the of Yeah, I don't... It's uh, That's the only lyrics I can remember either. 21st Century Schizoid Man. And then there's a lot of heavy guitars mm -hmm. and just like mostly the guitar and instrument work on this album i think is uh what makes it so famous and uh yeah that was my last record i got um so i picked up a few movies so we're gonna end this big book haul with just a couple dvds i picked up one for me is cellular one of my favorite action movies great fast-paced thriller lots of running chasing driving um, this is starring Chris Evans and uh, Kim Basinger, William H. Macy, and of course Jason Statham. Always great in an action movie. I wanted to rewatch this one and I swore I had it in my collection. Mm. And so one night I thought, oh, it's time to rewatch Cellular. And I was looking oh, no. all around for it and I didn't have it. So I had to go pick up a DVD copy of Cellular because it wasn't streaming anywhere and I didn't want to rent it because i thought i'm gonna want to rewatch this yeah. one again in the future might as well have it and after i did that i found out that two of my favorite action movies from that same time are the same writer uh cellular and uh phone booth oh that's what i was gonna guess yeah with colin farrell because they're so similar <laughs> yeah uh, they're both phone related <laughs> yeah apparently i can't remember which one was first he wrote one first he was trying to get it picked up and it wasn't, and then he wrote the other one Well, he was waiting mm. for the other one to be made. And yeah, they're basically the same premise, but inverse, because cellular Chris Evans is running around on the phone. Uh, phone booth, he's stuck in the phone booth. He can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's like <laughs> the same kind of thing. Uh, one's stuck in one place, one's on the move. And then there's a third one in, if you wanted to call it a trilogy, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's a movie called Messages Deleted, <laughs> written by the same person. So they're just like 
man, this guy can write phones. Yeah, man, this guy's good at phone thrillers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you could see the plastic wrap still on here, I haven't watched this one yet. Um, I watched the trailer. It didn't like stick out to me as like, oh, I need to watch it right now. But I really like those first two. Maybe a lot of that's nostalgia. So I don't know if this one will hold up. Uh, it's from 2009, and it stars... Um, what is that guy's name? Matthew Lillard is the main oh, guy. Oh, yeah, Shaggy. Yeah, Shaggy from the live-action <laughs> Scooby-Doo. And I think he's some kind of teacher who gets framed for a lot of murders. And I'm trying to think of how the phone comes in. He gets a call. Like, someone calls him, and he thinks it's a prank, but they call him right before he kills someone. But then they think it's him. I haven't watched it yet. Maybe I'll make a review yeah. of the trilogy after I watch it. Anyways, from a similar time period, I got a copy of The Invasion, starring Nicole Kidman and Daniel Craig. Uh, this is a remake of a remake of an adaptation because <laughs> it's like an old book from the 50s, I think, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This is the early 2000s movie. The Invasion. Uh, similar reason I got the other ones. Wanted to rewatch it. Didn't have it. So picked up a copy. It's pretty good. Uh, my next one is 42, The Jackie Robinson Story. Starring Chadwick Boseman before Black Panther as Jackie Robinson. The first African American baseball player. Uh, it's a true story. I got this one because I show movies to my... English class. I do monthly movie Mondays, and I usually do a true story from U.S. history, and I like to have the DVD. That way I don't have to rely on the school's internet mm. because I've tried to stream it, and sometimes it has problems. And I'm also happy to have this one in my collection because it was a really good movie. Have you seen this one? I haven't seen it. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's really good. Also, Harrison Ford is in it as the manager who decides to put him in. Uh, really good movie. And finally, the last movie I picked up is Barbie, the new Barbie movie with Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. And I did watch it already. You recommended it pretty highly mm -hmm. to me, so I wanted to pick it up. I would like to re-watch it because I watched it with my uh, in-law family, so we watched it dubbed into Spanish. Uh, I enjoyed it. I did like it, but I feel like I would probably like it more in the original language. There's just something missing, I feel like, especially with comedy when mm -hmm. it's dubbed over and you're not hearing the real person's voice. Yeah. All the uh, timing and delivery is so specific. and Yeah, because you know. it was funny and I liked it. It was entertaining. But when I saw Will Ferrell on there, I thought something about just the way Will Ferrell says <laughs> things like he's always funny yeah, to me. Yeah. So I'm like, it's probably even more funny. Yeah. Uh, so I'm glad I have the DVD. I can rewatch it in English later. Okay, so that's it. We've yeah, done it. lots we've, of books. We've made it through. <laughs> lots of music, <laughs> lots of movies. Like I said, the biggest book haul we've ever done. And who knows, maybe we can't control ourselves in the future. We'll do an even bigger one next time. Uh, probably. Uh, yeah, as always, <laughs> please let us know where to start. If you have read any of these books we mentioned, which one should we read first? Uh, because I have a lot on my to be read shelf from our yeah. previous book hauls mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and if you're looking for something to read other than what we just showed you, we also have some books published. So go down to the description box. We'll leave links to that. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned because we have got a new season of Adaptation Station and some other fun stuff coming up real soon. Yeah. And you can click another video now. Thank you. Bye.